so let's get on to how celebrities are feeling about the death of George Floyd. It has sparked outcry, outcry from some celebrities on social. LeBron James posted a photo of George Floyd being kneed to the head by a Minneapolis police officer next to a photo of former NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick taking a knee during the national anthem in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. LeBron captioned the photo, quote, do you understand now or is it still blurred to you? And Colin also tweeted this message saying, quote, when civility leads to death, revolting is the only logical reaction. The cries for peace will rain down and when they do, they will land on deaf ears because your violence has brought this resistance. We have the right to fight back, rest in power, George Floyd. Justin Bieber, he reposted the video of George Floyd and wrote, quote, this makes me absolutely sick. This makes me angry. This man died. This makes me sad. Racism is evil. We need to use our voice. And Demi Lovato weighed in with a post that read, I'm tired of typing rest in peace. I wish black men could live in peace. Powerful. Uh, Erica, what do you make of all of these celebrities also chiming in? Do you think that that creates um, hopefully uh, an influence for just, you know, everyday civilians? I think in the past, we have thought of speaking openly about social justice issues, especially when it comes to black and brown people as some type of extremism, like, oh, they're, that, that's an activist. Now, I think that people are understanding that, yes, there was a minority voice. Very few people were quick to, st to speak out because there was so much stigma surrounding speaking out. Now we're saying, why are we stigmatizing calling out the wrong? Especially when we have such a visible like example of these wrong actions. You can't tell someone to be civil when you just told them that their life isn't worth a counterfeit $20 bill. Wow. Like how do you how do you make someone respect someone who they don't even consider to be human. Yikes, yeah, you mentioned that earlier and it gave me chills. It's such a, um, a poignant and heartbreaking statement. Al, do you agree? Uh, I do, and, and let's not forget as we look at this story, Colin Kaepernick lost his job with the NFL for taking that knee. Never forget that. So it's kind of like a 360 of injustice. And also, I'll just add this, Sam. Uh, you know, I had a friend of mine, uh, I'm not gonna say who it was, that called me yesterday. He's. Uh, He's a white American and he wanted to know what he could do. Wow. And I thought a lot about this because he said he's frustrated, but he doesn't know what to do. He said he felt inept just posting on social media and just saying this can't happen. And I, I thought about it all day, Sam, and, and what people can do is stand up for us when we're not there. When you're at a picnic or family reunion and your uncle, oh, after he gets a couple drinks in him, here come the N words, here come the, the F double G words, all that kind of stuff. When that starts to happen, you speak up right then and you let people know that your presence will no, is a gift and you will not be in situations where things like that in, are being spoken of. Because if that same uncle was talking about how he, is, uh, he likes 13-year-old girls, no one would sit there and say, hey, that's okay, he's just got a couple in him. People would shut that conversation down. Well, you should do the same with race, racism, sexism, and homophobia and xenophobia. Stand Powerfully up for us when said. we're not there. Powerfully said. Thank you for that, Al. Thank you.